Hello people of YouTube, Maker Milo here. Welcome to my Voron Trident build. Today we're going over the bed and frame. This is part one of a multi-part series. Thank you very much for coming in and let's get to it. So you're super excited. You finally get your printer. It's home, it's there, it's in a box. First thing you wanna do, by far, is don't even i mean you could open the box see what you have inside but realistically what i would be looking to do is find some hardware organizers yes some hardware organizers why it's a lot of parts it's a lot of parts you're going to need to do something to keep yourself organized this is not a build that you can do uh in like a day this is not a pc build and even those things uh you can easily get this organized so i highly recommend you get yourself one of these hardware organizers like the one i'm showing on screen now and um honestly probably get two i gotta i gotta be honest with you i used one it wasn't enough i still lost a fair bit of parts but um yeah it's just anything to get you organized a cardboard box that you can subdivide in some way shape or form will help you a lot the frame is actually one of the easiest parts to assemble it's also one of the easiest parts to get wrong why if you don't build a square frame well you're gonna notice it when you start printing things are gonna be off like i mean your parts um and you may not even get it to properly like move or you know act how it should uh so i recommend you take precaution in this step try and build on something flat i built it on my kitchen counter it's quartz should be pretty flat i mean i got pretty good results um from it if you don't have a kitchen counter use a glass table if you don't have that build on the floor if you have tile uh just anything that's like flatter than that janky piece of ikea furniture you bought like two years ago so you're getting ready to build your frame one thing to consider is if you want to use Loctite on the frame bolts themselves. Why? Well, uh, it's it's just to ha it's a nice to have to have that extra assurance that once everything is nice and square, you know the bolts are not going to come loose. I haven't had my machine have any loose bolts, but um, I do check it periodically, and even on the LS guide, that's the tuning guide you're going to follow when you're done. Uh, that you should follow when you're done. Uh, he recommends that you retighten every bolt every time you do a tuning uh, pass. And I kind of understand why, you know, with all the vibrations, especially when during input shaping, you want to assure that your stuff is not going to move out of place. I talked to the people on the Voron Discord about this, and they didn't seem to have an issue with uh, putting Loctite on the frame. They didn't think it was necessary, but if I had to go back, I would do that. It's something I didn't do and I really wish I would have. Step number one. But before that, can you believe I actually got a sponsor for this channel? PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop to CNC machining, 3D printing, and PCB manufacturing. They offer both populated and unpopulated boards as well as a wide range of 3D printing materials. These include ABS, PLA, PC, and TPU. They also have a shared project section. Here you can find community open source projects where makers can collaborate with one another. Thank you PCBWay for being the channel sponsor. Step number one, take whatever frame you're using. In my case, I used an LDO frame for a Trident 350 millimeters and just inspect it, get it out of the package. Make sure that it's not scratched, dent, bent, any of the sort, and uh, get ready to build. You're also going to be using, if you're following the Voron guide, M5 bolts, and you're doing blind joints. This is a huge reason why I decided to go with a pre-built frame um, and a kit, because all the holes come tapped, and they come ready and drilled for your blind joints. I do not trust myself to make those uh holes correctly and accurately i do not have a drill press so you know for about 150 bucks give or take depending on who you're buying your frame for from and at whatever time of the year you're buying it that's more or less what you're gonna find uh on the market so i think that's a pretty good price to guarantee that you're gonna have just a good experience so 
get your bolts. You're going to be using M510 bolts, if I remember correctly. Don't quote me on that. I'm not actually looking at my video while I'm doing this voiceover. But uh, yeah, so I think it's M510s. Assemble kind of like the bottom square of the printer and then put the pillars in place like so the vertical extrusions this helps uh in a lot of ways because you kind of already have some rigidity and when you tighten the bolts snug not tight snug when you snug the bolts in um it kind of holds itself and it allows you to get the other stuff ready um, it's important that in this step you have something like a machinist square which are very inexpensive on Amazon and you have enough um, accuracy there to get the job done. Had I gone back to the build I would really get one of the I think they're called one two three blocks and they're machinist blocks and they're built to a higher degree of, um, of accuracy. That's not really what I want them for but Given that you have more material, it would be easier to make things square up. The machine is square I'm using. It's kind of tiny. It was really hard to hold, especially when the gloves and everything. Um, yeah. So, uh, I really recommend you get a one to three block instead of a machine is square. If they do the same thing, machine is square, higher precision, nicer. Uh, your build would be much better with it. The frame is going to get considerably more rigid. Ri con consider ri you know what I mean. It's going to get more rigid as you build up. And when you're trying to put especially the the gantry supports on each side, uh, those are the beams that don't, are not at the extremities, are like halfway up or two thirds of the way up. When you put those in, it's going to get real rigid. You need You want to have a little play there. Um, so that you can like properly tighten it in pay close attention very close attention to um, which like extrusions go where there is one extrusion that has a hole in the center and it's not for the it's not for the bed it's for the back of the frame so that it can support one of the Z rods you gotta be real careful address that one early on and set it to the side. In fact, if you want to start there and assemble that T, you're more than welcome to. It's actually not a bad idea because you can get a little bit of practice as to how blank joints work. Not that it's uh, rocket science, but uh, it's pretty cool the way this thing comes together. The most important part is making sure everything is square. Here, you're gonna measure from tip to tip. What did he say? And I don't think I have a recording of this. It kind of sucks. But you're going to measure from the very tip top to the other diagonal at the bottom. And whatever it's reading, it doesn't really matter. Let's say you get, I don't know, 27 and a half inches because I'm in America. And uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. You're not looking for, you're just looking for an arbitrary number. The important thing is that when you measure the opposing diagonal, that you're getting a roughly the same measurement. Yeah. I'm no expert in this. Neto has a really good video on how to do this. That's the video I followed and um, I got pretty good results. Squaring up my frame did not take too long. Maybe like 15, 20 minutes, give or take. Had to loosen up some bolts and retine them, but it was pretty, it was pretty straightforward. The bed. This is the part that I, I don't want to say I enjoyed the most, but it was the most straightforward to me. And uh, no one commented on why I did what I did in the bed. Mine came wrapped up in this clear plastic. It's covered with machine oil. What you want to do is take a 91% rubbing alcohol. I guess you could use acetone. I recommend against it. You don't want to throw that harsh chemical at this and work with, you know, more dangerous stuff. But 91% rubbing alcohol is what I used. Worked like a charm. You basically, I put it in a wash bottle, I doused the whole bed, and I just cleaned it with paper towels. And I gave it, I mean, I don't know how it shows on the video. I think I only showed one pass, but I did like three or four passes of rubbing alcohol. Made sure that was sterile before I moved on to the next step. The next step is putting the magnet down. Now, in, 
I would, you could do what you want, it's your build, but I highly recommend you do magnet side first, because that's gonna remain relatively flat, then flip it over and do the Canovo heater. I didn't use the silicon on the heater, um, because it seems to mainly be for making sure it adheres at high temperatures over you know, the course of time. I have 500 hours on my printer. My heater is stuck on there very well. Haven't had any issues. If I do have issues, I will do the silicon thing, but I haven't seen a video of someone applying the silicon gasket thing along the heater in such a way where it doesn't end up looking bad. I'm sorry. But I didn't want that. So I just skipped that step altogether. Now here's one thing that I haven't heard talk about much. I found it on a forum when I was doing my research for the build. I took, after everything was assembled with the bed, I took a piece of basswood that you can find at Michael's or you know stuff like that. They're designed for laser engraving or wood burning, that kind of stuff. I had one laying around and it was perfect. I put it on top of the Kenovo heater so that the weights I put on top will not damage the heater. This worked wonderfully. Then I put 20 pounds worth of weights. I have a, like, you know, like a dumbbell weights and I put them on the top of the Canovo, on, on top of the basswood that's atop the Canovo heater. Why did I do this? I did this so that that pressure could help equalize the layer of glue um, on the magnet and in theory, therefore flatten my bed more. The bed plates we're using are very accurate. They're very nice but there's a lot of room for error when applying that magnet and glue doesn't set evenly across the whole thing so i saw this uh video i forgot who it was from if i find him i'll link him in the description and he showed that just by doing this treatment over the course of 24 hours um it significantly improved his bed level like bed mesh results so, well, I don't know if significance is the right word, but good enough to warrant doing. I mean, this doesn't take much. Um, and I did this. I left the bed plate under 20 pounds of weight overnight. But yeah, I got pretty good bed mesh results from doing this. One caveat, if you don't have a good um, flat surface where you can leave this for the next 24 hours on, then you're, I don't know, I don't want to recommend you to not do it, but you really want to find something flat so that that flatness transfers over and you're not just messing up your bed level even more. Uh, I recommend, if again, if you can't, if you don't have a counter like mine that's relatively flat, uh, glass tables are actually pretty flat and they seem to be fairly commonplace. Any form of glass just make sure that it's thick normally the tempered glass is pretty flat so if you could build at least your frame and bed on top of one of those things you're pretty set for the rest of the build and i think that's it that's all i have to say on this video this is the first time i show my face in this channel hopefully this came out good i'm not used to talking in front of a camera but yeah uh, i wish you all the best thank you very much and i'll see you next time